Welcome back to another United Arena review where we review the things that we've been watching. And Joel, we watched some special this past weekend because yeah, we today we are going to be reviewing Deadpool and Wolverine. Hell yeah. Boy, oh boy. Did we have a blast? And we'll tell you about all the good spoily stuff up ahead. But of course, I want to remind everybody at home that we recently just did our review for Star Wars Acolyte. So go back and watch that. But most importantly, United We Nerd are official affiliates of Zenny Gaming. That's right. We have a special link down below in the description where you can go to ZennyGaming.com where you can get cool glasses like this but we will tell you about that in a little bit joel without spoiling anything deadpool and wolverine um contrary to what ign just said has a lot of heart a lot of fun um a little more Bro. family driven than i thought it was so um i i enjoyed it of course there's a lot of nostalgia but they pushed forward with some new stuff Dude, yeah, so I I don't know. I don't want to be hating, but IGN was like, whoever was writing that article was super fucking hating on this movie. I even commented on it. I never commented on Instagram posts on our thing, but I was like, did we watch the same movie? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but what about you, Brian? Bro, I, I had a blast from beginning to end. I am admittedly a Marvel mcu uh fan uh i wouldn't say i'm, a, I'm an apologist because there are things that i can critique and criticize but i feel like for the third outing of deadpool first under the mcu banner i felt like they did not hold ryan reynolds and the team back at all like they they went super far and beyond, I thought, any Disney movie would allow them to go. And it was to their benefit because this, I feel, with haven't seen the first and second one in a little bit, I feel like this might be a runner for my favorite Deadpool movie. Like you said, it has a lot of heart. It, it honors uh, the... Deadpool and even the the Fox Marvel Universe, uh, I oh, think really such well. A love letter, and we'll talk about that more. It was such a love letter to Fox and Fox Studios and the properties that they made before they got absorbed by Disney. For yeah, sure. and um, it's it's kind of funny just to have this uh, big, big opening weekend. I want to say like what. They, I think they made the record for highest like opening of a rated R movie. I believe. I would expect nothing less. But uh, yeah, because I know that you know, for a lot of people, the MCU movies haven't been hitting their stride as much as people would like it to be, and a lot of people are getting burnt out about them. But. Um, I am about one thing, but that's for <laughs> another recording. We'll get into that. But let's just see. Uh, this movie had a budget of $20 million. Not, what? Not bad. I mean, the other Deadpool movies used a lot less. Or at least the first one used a lot less. Now, this movie's budget was $200 million because of the... I thought you said $20 million. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> they no, were $200 right. million. Oh, fuck. Um, holy cause, shit. Because <laughs> as I remember, this this movie was being filmed during the writer's strike last year. So oh, yeah, production had to stop. Uh, I believe the script got changed a little bit like once all the writing strikes were done and everything. Um, but... For a budget of two hundred million dollars, so far, at least according to their Wikipedia page, uh, they have a box office of just shy of five hundred million dollars, and it's been out for less than a week. 
Well, like, sir, wait, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, I guess if you technically count Thursday night, there's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's been out for less than five days. And it's <laughs> almost quadrupled their, <laughs> their budget. <laughs> mm-hmm. So good on them. But yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, because Deadpool is an acquired taste for some people. You know, there's a lot of crude mm-hmm. humor. There's a lot of quips being thrown at you a mile a minute. So very crass, you know, very low hanging fruit at times. Yeah. So if you're not into that, I can see, you know, why you wouldn't be. But then as far as the fan base that this is appealing to, I don't know how you could full on hate this movie. You know, it might not be their favorite movie. It might not be the best movie you're seeing, but it is. I believe from start to end, a very, very good movie, a very entertaining movie, I should say. Um, Lots of nostalgia and worked well, too. I'm sure we'll talk more about that. But like I was hoping they would do certain things and they did to an extent. And I'm very happy what they did. (laughs) They did. They did more than I thought they were going to (laughs) do. I know what scene you're talking about. I was like, holy shit. Uh, I literally yelled in the theater. We didn't see it together. uh, But if we did, I think we would have erupted at a, a few certain points. Oh, man. I okay. Just sort of stop beating around the bush. We're gonna we're gonna get into spoiler talk territory. Uh, but before I do that, um, let's just mention again, real quick, that we are Zenny Gaming Affiliates. So if you guys at home are looking for some cool glasses for your gaming sessions or just in regular life, click the link down below. You can go to zennygaming.com where you can get nice glass like these ones that I've been wearing for a good while uh, with my blocks blue light tinted glasses with a nice purple tint you can get many more from there but of course you could also get regular reading glasses you can get glasses w- with your prescriptions you can get sunglasses you can get anything and everything for a decent price and also something that expresses your style they have many many styles Go check them out. We're so happy that Zenny Gaming has allowed us to become affiliates with them. So go check out the link. Help support Zenny Gaming. Help support us through the link as well. Joel. All right. It is time for yes, some spoilers. Oh, shit, boy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm just going to come out and say it right now. Wesley Snipes as fucking Blade. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't I literally know. literally yelled. I was like, what? Like, I I was, was blown away. I was like, they, they got fucking. And it's funny because I forgot that he was <laughs> Deadpool. Right, uh, Ryan Reynolds is in Blade Trinity, not as yep. Deadpool, but as, essentially a Deadpool character. And my wife reminded me. I was like, "Oh fuck, that's right. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're joined in more ways than one." So I, that was a good uh, crossover moment. And uh, my wife was super excited because she loves the Electra movie. Um, that was a I'm cool. so glad they brought her back. Good to see Jennifer Garner again. They even hinted at Daredevil because <laughs> you know they oh, got that was shit funny. going on. It's like, yeah, we don't need him. That that was hilarious. Um, and what was really cool um, is they even gave Channing Tatum his shot as Gambit, full Gambit outfit. He's in the character, and I just. It's, you know, they nix the movie before it happens, but I appreciate, you know, he wanted to have his shot because he never got it, which is like a dual thing, right? Because the movie never got its shot, right? So it, it was a nice little little thing. And, of course, we have uh, Daphne Keene as X-23, and just those four there was really cool. And I was like, damn, we got our Avengers team up, like, Fox style. And I was hoping for that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it, it was great. And of course, previously in the movie, Chris Evans was there. I was like, oh shit, they got Captain America. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
He's a fucking human torch, dude. That <laughs> shit cracked so me up, and I was good. so happy to see it. That was fucking. He's gonna a say. It. He's gonna say. It. Avengers, flame on. Flame on. <laughs> and, and of course, he goes perfect. up against like his his one weakness, fucking pyro. He just yeah. absorbs all of his flames as a and fucking. The reintegration and, of that. Oh, it's so good. Like the Brotherhood of Mutants. Even some other, like, I forgot the striped guy. I was like, who the fuck is that? The Russian. And I was like, oh, shit. That's the Punisher villain. I was like, it took me forever. I was like, who the fuck is this striped That's fuck? the Russian. Yeah. Uh, mean, not played by the original actor, because no, the original Kevin actor Nash. was Kevin Nash. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and that's yeah. the thing. Because, like, like you said, like, we got to see um, Azazel. There was Lady Deathstrike. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was Juggernaut, which I found out not the original actor. Oh, no, he didn't. Just want to a return. guy that looks really, really close to him. I want to return it. I even think they made a joke about it. I said this year's Juggernaut. You know. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, really, really good stuff. And just you know, we had the original Sabretooth, and they actually fought for like three seconds, and it was a good fight. Um, uh, that was fun. Yeah, this is. An- I feel like. It preys a lot on nostalgia, but it did it well. Like if you grew up with those movies, watching those movies, and you, it just just paid it forward a little. It was really cool to see it again, and with some MCU flavor too. But yeah, I I was like, wow, they got fucking Wesley Snipes back, man, because him apparently Ryan Reynolds didn't get along. And I just saw this video. I think I sent it to you. Where it's like, well, it's been twenty years, and I got a call from Ryan Reynolds. I'm not gonna hang up, you know. <laughs> so. See, that was the coolest thing about having this movie come out the same weekend as Comic-Con. Because they ended up having a panel um, in Hall H. And they had all the cameo, like, surprise characters, uh, actors come in. And so we got more interviews with with people like Wesley Snipes and and the rest of them. And he was, yeah, he was talking about, it's like, yeah, I mean... If Disney, if Disney is down for it, I don't think they would be. But if they are, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> it's like yeah. hell yeah. Um, uh, and they even, they even played on that, on that rumor too in the movie. Oh yeah. Motherfuckers <laughs> trying to ice skate uphill <laughs> again. Motherfuckers still trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> oh, but like, there's only one blade. That shit is like oh that's layered too because they're pl- oh, blades one. growing through some shit right now the other bl- the mcu player like ah fuck it's Man, only really one blade the- they're ever gonna be one blade <laughs> right oh. <laughs> oh it's it's sad because mahershala ali is a fucking great actor and we even heard him in eternals if you forgot the post credit scene because i did i was reminded he mm. talks to john snow um and i just i'm so sad anyway we'll get to that later yeah. but yeah that was whoo and then, of course, you know, all, oh, my God, so many just jabs <laughs> at Hugh Jackman within yeah. the realm of, like, Wolverine. And also, all of the different Wolverine cameos we got. Oh, that was amazing. They had ones from, like, like deep dive comics, too. Well, some not so deep. But I, I was just surprised. So, we saw, like, a version of Old Man Logan. We saw Patch, where he has the eye patch in the suit. And I thought there were going to be more actors, but it was just him again, which I appreciated. And uh, so, they had the Age of Apocalypse Wolverine. But go ahead, Brian. I know you're trying to say something. Well, no, because I, I want to get into, like, just a few of the different Wolverines, like the, the most notable ones. Um, I can think of one like you I said, didn't see coming. <laughs> like you said, we got the short Wolverine. Oh, that was so fucking funny. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> yo, Tommy accurate size Wolverine. The super fucking short. He's so t- um, <laughs> and he's down for it. That's why he's like, "Yeah, I'm ready to go." <laughs> he's so tidy. Oh man. Uh, we got Patch, one of Wolverine's um uh uh alter egos from the comics, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, we even got the variant of um the one specific cover. Of um, it was like Talking the fever the dream storyline. It was the one oh. where, like, on the cover, it's like oh, Wolverine like on the X, an X or whatever. Yeah, which is yeah. all the skulls around him, and they yeah, actually yeah. did that. That was 
Oh, that was really cool looking. Um, the comic cover like, of the Hulk's reflection in his claws, too. That was. We ooh, even got a little a- bit of the Hulk in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Which was sick. Um, like uh, you said, we got the Age of Apocalypse, Wolverine. Yeah. And one that I did not see coming. I oh, didn't yeah. even know this oh, yeah. was a thing. I heard the rumor, but I'm glad to see it happen. <laughs> um, but we got <laughs> the Calvarine, Henry Cavill, as Wolverine working on his motorcycle. Looks really good, by the way. I mean, his his arms are still fucking huge. Those yeah. Superman arms. And uh, yeah, Daddy Calvarine. And I'm so glad they did it. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, they actually did it. It's fucking Henry Cavill's little reads. That was that was yeah. a great, great fucking cameo. So I just wanna I just wanna talk about what I think sold me on this movie at the very beginning. I'm gonna paint you a picture, Joel. So like most Deadpool movies do, you have Deadpool in a situation, whatever, and it's basically him stopping time and being like, it's the old like trope of like, you're wondering how I got here. Let me oh, let me yeah. go back. So Deadpool is looking for, you know, a Wolverine. And so the movie starts at the gravesite of Wolverine from Logan. And of course you see <laughs> Deadpool digging the grave. You know, everybody was saying it's like, how oh, man, they're gonna ruin like Logan, like they're gonna have Wolverine come back. And mm. so I I know that this was like a brain like a like a brainstorm idea of having them dig up the grave and then pretty much go be like, hey, you know, Wolverine has regenerative powers. He's fine. You know, we can he can come back and then to find out, oh, no, the Logan Wolverine is still very f- fucking dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he pulls out his animanium skeleton, skeleton yeah. talks with him, has a little Hugh Jackman jokes in, in there. And of course, we get the TVA that comes out in the. Uh, in the background and so he's like I'm not gonna give you my weapons but I s- promise you I will not use them on you and so of course you know you see the look in his eyes like he's gonna fucking do some wild and of course he yeah, flips yeah. over starts pulling bones off of the sc- off of Wolverine's corpse and starts using him as weapons to this to the tune of bye 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 by in sync. So I got I got a little spoiled by this because the in the theater that we were at, uh, the other showings like that music was blasting, dude. So I was like, okay, oh, well, I guess bye 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 is somewhere in this movie. Little did I know, it's at the very beginning. The very beginning, yeah. <laughs> and the best part is <laughs> throughout this whole fight scene intro, they cut back to Deadpool doing the full choreography for Bye 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 for the entire song. It was so fucking wild. And I was just like, all right, this is the energy. I'm in. Let's fucking go. I'm I'm ready. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> Joel, I want to I want to toss this to you. What were some of your favorite parts of the movie? Um. That that Wolverine cameo explosion was pretty good. Human Torch was great. Um, I'm gonna touch on uh Cassandra Nova. We haven't seen mm. an Omega level threat that dangerous, I think, in a minute. So that was really cool. That, see, she was fucking cold. She's dark, she's evil. It's great. I, I really love that. And the actress did a great job. Um they wrote her really well. Um I did really enjoy the, there's a fight scene in the van. They were very creative. That was pretty. Oh funny. my god, yes. Um, I just want to touch on that. But yeah, the the Fox uh like defenders team up was really cool. Um, I I, I can't. And then they, you know, again oh, like Gambit getting his shot too. Like oh, he bro. wasn't even. You know, 
that was that was pretty great. We need to talk about that for a second. Like, like you mentioned before, like they had Channing Tatum come in to not really reprise his role, but really debut his role as Gambit. They, they, almost there. Like they had him like getting ready, training, and everything, but they just like they nixed it. I think. Well, because well, because uh, that's when Disney bought Fox. Or 20th Century Fox. And so they just canceled the movie because of the, the merger. So we never got to see Chatting Tatum as Gambit until now. And he gets like a done with like the classic like comic book like yeah. animated Gambit with all of his powers. And of course, he has to go full um, Creole yeah. like speaking. <laughs> and it's. <laughs> And of course, they're like, making the joke of how they they can't understand him all that well, but he's still really good. Shit. <laughs> what was the line? What was the, what was the, what was the line he said? It was something along the line of, um, uh, I don't even really know who I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need to but, show I need to show people what I can do, and people need to remember this day. <laughs> it's like oh my fucking god it's so, fu- so it's, good um, it's like i can see how he wouldn't have his own movie but just the fact that he he is there in the character it was just perfect i loved it um i do really like throughout the film like they show deadpool is an idiot as he should be and he can't mm-hmm. stop talking but he real him and Wolverine have these very tender, impactful moments. You know, that's that's definitely the style. And I was talking about with my wife, like it's like they hit you hard with humor and then they hit you hard in the feels, you know, and they I think they're like, Hugh Jackman, we're gonna make you fucking earn your paycheck. And they did. Like I they're just mm. like, wow, this fucking Wolverine guy is he's really in it, you know? Like I I'm there, I'm not thinking about anything else. I believe it. So it it was that that was some some good stuff and you know, it's it's just a lot yeah. of fun too. It's just so much fun. I think it's just. What about you, Brian? Do you have some standout? Moments? There's well, more I have, but I just is there more well, standout to, to, moments to, you? to bounce to bounce off of of what you're just saying? I think the decision they made to give this version of Wolverine, so this variant of Wolverine, is at least you know by TV standards considered the worst of the worst Wolverines as far as how much of a fuck up he is like Wolverine or Deadpool meets this Wolverine at a bar like Wolverine would, but nobody likes him. Nobody gives a fuck about this Wolverine Um, to later find out that he basically ditched all the X-Men on the night that, the mansion got raided and everybody ended up dying from it. So it was because of yeah. him, all the X-Men in his universe were gone. Um, so we got to have the experience of having this version of a Wolverine who still has growth because if they just went with the idea of Deadpool was going to take back the Logan Wolverine and then maybe like spruce him up a bit with some like Deadpool bullshit, you know, that's that was a, a full circle character already, so there wouldn't be much development there. So it was good. It was a good idea that they took this down and out Wolverine and brought him to a point where it's like this is Wolverine, like this is the Wolverine that we all know and love. Yeah. Um. But yeah, their dynamic, fucking great. Like Deadpool is all jokes, where Wolverine is super serious and doesn't take his mm-hmm. bullshit. Yeah. And of course, they butt heads a few times. The first fight they had was the coolest I think Wolverines ever looked. Because we got, we're in the void, right? Uh, there's the whole thing where like the 20th Century Fox, you know, logos mm-hmm. behind Deadpool, you know, they're getting ready to scrap. And so Wolverine like puts down his claws, hunches down, and he just, he just fucking starts going like an animal like Wolverine does in other media. So it's really cool to see in live action Wolverine actually kind of have this fluidity that we haven't seen in live action. Like the, we've seen more in like animated stuff and like other uh, like 
how you imagine like in the comic panels that he would be. Um, the the plot is there. You know, I'll I'll you know I'll give it that the plot is there. It's not super detailed. It doesn't have to be because it's Deadpool. Like the whole idea for people that haven't seen or people watching is that Deadpool is trying to be a hero. He's trying to be important in his world, right? And so it kind of leads him down a trail where he, you know, gets caught by the TVA, talks to Mr. Paradox, who ends up being a bad guy. Wink, wink. So Whoa. it's kind of like a spinoff of the TVA. It's kind of like, you know, they're doing some little secret. Um, and of course, uh, they get pruned because Deadpool was Deadpool and they retire of his shit. Especially because he stole another Wolverine from another timeline. Mm-hmm. And they get to the void. And so the whole story is Deadpool is trying to escape the void to save his timeline because the anchor being, which is a new term that they brought out for this movie, um, mm. was the Logan De- the Logan Wolverine. Um, I want to ask you this, Joel. Do you see them ever using the term anchor being ever again? I think if Deadpool is in Doomsday or Secret Wars, he'll bring it up and they'll someone will say, like, I don't like that term or that's not what they'll it is. Shoot like, they'll shoot away. Yeah, they'll shit on it and move it away. I, it's, I know what they were trying to do, but I think that term only works in Deadpool. You feel me? Like it, mm. it won't fly in Fantastic Four or whatever. They, they'll think of something smarter. Not you know what I mean? Like that's just who Deadpool is. I, I feel like there is another term they could use, but it's like that's a little maybe too good for Deadpool. I think, you know, because I, 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 yeah, because I think I could I could give them I could give people who criticize this movie like a little bit of credit for this because it kind of doesn't make sense because your universe loses the anchor being so in like 15,000 years or whatever Mr. Paradox said, like your timeline will just wither away like slowly. But he was trying to like prune like universes like super fucking quick with like the, the oh, MacGuffin yeah. of the movie. Um, <laughs> but um, I guess we'll see what happens because now technically the universe that this Wolverine was from is isn't there anymore. And now he's in Deadpool's universe. Yeah. And so it's just like, so does that fix everything or does it just fuck other shit up? You know, I would really love if Loki is in doomsday or like the, the Avengers movie after that or the for secret wars. And you have an interaction between him and Deadpool and like Deadpool, just like it's like, oh, you know, it's a good thing I say my timeline, and, and Loki's just like, uh huh, and he's or, just like, he'll be like, I'm glad, you know, my timeline was saved, and he's like, you're welcome. I feel like that's what Loki would say, like, you're welcome. <laughs> I let that happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what was it? The. So the whole thing about Cassandra Nova. Um, you know, it, it served its purpose. She so the character was done really well. Yeah. Um, I believe the actor's name. Uh, Emma Corrin did a fantastic job of portraying this character. Um you know, it suffers the plight of Marvel villains lasting a movie. But I think for this situation, it kind of fills its purpose for the most part. Yeah. But for people who don't know who Cassandra Nova is in. a cer- Is this like the main timeline in the comics? Or it's like some uh, kind of variant. I think there. I have a, a X Men volume where Cassandra Nova is the villain of that arc, so okay. she she's around. Okay, here and there. So she is the twin 
sibling of Professor X. Turns out when they're in the womb, Professor X accidentally kills her. She goes away. And then in the comics, some weird magic shit happens. And then she is alive again. Uh, but in the co- in Deadpool and Wolverine, she gets sent to the void. And she kind of becomes like the pseudo ruler of like at least that section of the void that they're in. Yeah, yeah. Where their hideout is the corpse of a giant uh, <laughs> Ant-Man. Giant man, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty which great. I, which I believe was done in one of the one of the certain comics that was like a thing. I want to say Old Man Logan. I think they use his skeleton or something, but I might be wrong. Like they kinda, it, was, it was like the same concept, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she is a super strong telekinetic. Um, she pretty much has most of the same powers that Xavier does, except the only catch is that she cannot do it from her mind. She has to read people's minds by fucking sticking their hand, her hand into the person's brain. And it just created this weird like nasty effect where like the hands like poking out of like body like the head it was yeah. it was gruesome it was gruesome but it did the job very gruesome um so you know she's ruling that section like kind of having all of, like these brotherhoods of mutant people and like other like minor villains from fox universe movies yeah and that was actually pretty good i think um Cassandra Nova as a character was really good. Um, I kind of wish that the it felt like the the climax kind of was a little bit rushed in a way because it was kind of like you know they settled the differences in the void like she helped them get back into you know Deadpool's universe Mm -hmm. but then of course bad guys got a bad guy ends up going to the same universe to basically be like, Hey, yo, Mr. Paradox, you went back on our deal. You know, now I'm just going to fucking start tearing up universes with your machine. Yeah. And I don't know it. Like I said, not a big deal for me. It's just a small minor nitpick. I kind of wish we had a little bit more build up to the climax because in lieu of that, um, we had this super, super fun Deadpool Battle Royale. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, I want to uh, kind of get to real quick. Um, so, Joel, I have a list of key uh, Deadpool variants, and I kind of want to see if you can make a guess on who played them so of course we'll i'll start with the standout one uh lady deadpool oh yeah do you do you know who played her i I think it was blake lively right his uh ryan reynolds wife yes (laughs) yeah i figured that it is really cute i was like of course he puts his wife in the movie so lady deadpool is blake lively kid pool was their oldest daughter that's funny and then baby pool was the voice of their youngest child. That's funny. So it was like the whole Reynolds family was, was in the movie. Nepotism. Nepotism. Um, Headpool. Do you know who played that? I'm going to be honest. I don't know who played what the voices were familiar. All I'll say is the fucking common writer looking one was sick. Common writer one was really cool. Common writer one was really cool. Okay. So I, I love seeing the variants. I was just Head- I was just like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> oh no, it was really good. Like, cause we we kind of knew it was coming, you know, just from yeah. like internet talk and stuff. But like I felt like this was like this is a dead this is like a deadpool comic moment. Um yeah. but Headpool was played by Nathan Fillion. Nice. So we got we got Ghost in there a little bit. Um let's see. Um so you notice that there was a Deadpool with a Welsh flag on. I did see that. Yeah. So apparently, well, cool. I so apparently, so apparently that was played by one of um, Reynolds' friends who plays on the, I believe, the soccer team that he owns. 
like a Welsh soccer oh, team that funny. he owns. That's funny. And so they got to play a role in it. Um, not notable, but there was a Deadpool that was played by Tom Holland's brother as a as a favor, which was kind of cool. Nice. And the other notable Deadpool, the cowboy Deadpool, or Deadpool oh, yeah? the Kid. Do you know who voiced him? No, nah, not at all. I, I I was too busy, like, coolly put in Deadpool core, and I was wondering if there's going to be more variants, but then, you know, we had Wolverine variants and the Cavalry, so I was well, enjoying it. They did, did a great job, though. Well, Joel, I'll have you know, it was none other than the all right, all right, all right himself. Matthew oh McConaughey was he, he Cowboy the Deadpool. He made it. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> he, he walked in and walked out. Henry Cavill and Matthew McConaughey and Brad Pitt in, in the MCU via Deadpool. It's crazy. Yeah, De- Deadpool was bringing all the big names in. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, uh, just a few of... Uh, the big notable names that were Deadpool cameos, which was, which was pretty sick. Cause I know for a while, like there was a lot of discourse that like, Oh, is lady Deadpool? Like, uh, you know, is it Taylor Swift? Is it lady Gaga? Is it like, you know, some, yeah, yeah. you know, some like kind of like, you know, name any like blonde, you know, star, yeah. but it was kind of cool that, you know, they made it like, you know, it's going to, Bring the family in. This is, you know, potentially like the last Deadpool movie, like solo Deadpool movie. Let's bring everybody in. It's a big occasion. Um, and of course, we had another variant called Nice Pool, who was Ryan Reynolds <laughs> with long hair, always happy, always, always in a joyous mood. Um, Dream Canadian Deadpool. Doesn't have he- a healing factor. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> he fucking gets shot up and then he uses his body again. Oh my god. That's that's some good slapstick, I'm gonna say. And of sure. course the star of the show, Dogpool. Yes, yes. Very very nice dog pool. Um let's see. I'm trying to think uh, of I some- just want to nitpick something before oh. I forget. Go for um, it. Um uh before we get to that really cool finale, which I really want to talk about. And of course the Amazing use of like a prayer for the fight scene and the finale, but um, I I I'm just sad we didn't get to see um Domino and Cable for a second. They had such a big impact on the last movie, but I know it's Deadpool and Wolverine, not Deadpool and his family, which they kind of hinted at. I just even for a couple seconds, we got like so many other things, but I mean, I got a lot yeah. bigger and better things too. So I think maybe it would have muddled it too much, but I think for Deadpool's story. It would have been nice to see them, even if it was for a second, you know. But it did, it did kind of make it like weird because you got to see everybody else. Yeah, we even saw Shattered Star, who gets fucking iced, which I think is yeah, hilarious. that was kind of interesting. So I was like, oh, he's but there. I guess because he's All an right. alien, he can come back. Whatever. I guess. Um, but yeah, you got like Colossus, yeah. Negas- Megasonic, and then you had like Dupio. Dupinder, Peter. Yeah. Oh my God, Peter! I that feel was- like had the biggest biggest role of all the Deadpool friends. Yeah, E. Peter. <laughs> all, all the other Deadpool Peter. Peter! I was like, that's a perfect way to cater to these Deadpools. But yeah, uh, just that's my one. Okay, there's another nitpick I have, but it's more okay. like a, what I've liked to have seen. But it's okay. But yeah, I think maybe they were busy or they didn't have the budget to bring them back on. But I think even if it was for a second, for you know, or them in the picture, I think would have just. I, I, like I, I think they had like one line that kind of like explains cable, like yeah, or just explain why they weren't there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it would it would have been kind of nice, especially since there was kind of more recent, you know, yeah, as far yeah. as like the Deadpool history goes for like movies and stuff I mean, like that. Shit, we're getting Tim Nelson who played the leader for like two to five minutes is going to be a villain in the next Captain America. I, f- I feel like they could have gotten Josh Brolin or Zazie Beats, but maybe, they, you know, one was busy with Dune, and I don't know what Zazie Beats is up to. but Or maybe they didn't like Deadpool 2. Shit, who knows? <laughs> but I, I just think, for me, it would have would have been nice. But that's just me. Yeah. I really um, like Deadpool 2. But. Another, another fun fact, in the, the side-scrolling, like, Deadpool fight... They actually managed 
to p- throw in a small little Easter eggy oh, Stan yeah, Lee. I almost missed it. My wife pointed out. She, she pointed at the screen. Yeah, it's like on it. the bus. There's like this ad on the bus that has some like text from Stan Lee and it has a little picture of him on there. So yeah. Stan Lee got to technically be in all of the Deadpool movies. As he should be, as he was in all the other Fox movies, I think. Maybe not New Mutants, which I still haven't seen, but um <laughs> but yeah, uh that was a nice of course that was an, it was a very nice touch. Yeah. Um I just want to move us a little forward, but yeah, Cassandra Nova gets to the killing machine and what's his face? Uh Mr. Paradox, aka the guy from Succession. Uh Mr. Darcy tries, you know, doesn't do any shit to stop them, and they have their moment of, you know, it'll take one person to disable this machine because it's made out of matter and antimatter and they'll have to sacrifice themselves right and mm. you know they both go back and forth about who's going to come in who's going to do it wolverine says i gotta do it you know my universe is gone and of course deadpool tricks him and you know deadpool's about to do it he's like pretty much failing and of course it's both their movies they they both which was a great like scenic like imagery and setup and cinematography wise was great you know they're both grabbing the the I don't know, like the, the matter and antimatter, of, you know, the ropes of time together. And of course, the like a prayer comes back on. They fucking lean into Hugh Jackman being ripped. His fucking yep. shirt blows off. Yep. It was a really cool moment. I was like, oh, but then this is where I was talking about earlier. I was like, oh, shit. Are they actually going to fucking follow through with killing them? I think would have hit so much harder if they actually were gone. But. Nah. It's also a Deadpool movie, but I'm okay with it too. I just think like, damn, like it would have been, like, I would have been like, holy shit, if they followed through. But of course, they come out, they're okay. We got a oh, little good. visit from someone from the TVA to kind of you know talk about things. So yeah, I, it, I was, it was the just Avengers a invented shawarma. I know <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny, but yeah, it's uh, it's just. It wraps up really nicely in a cute way. They, of course, say, like, are we done? No, we're not. Maybe. You know? that Of course. They, they leave us wanting a little more. And Guessing Deadpool has his family bit. in the end. That's what he wanted. And it's, again, like a family film. I, I know. I'm, I'm kind of, like, shooting forward a little. But what was really cool, I only heard there was one post credit scene, which we'll talk about in a second. But they're the, the love letter to Fox. They have, like, a kind of cool yeah. behind-the-scene camera of all fox film or 20th century fox films that marvel worked on and it was really cute and i think it was definitely made for like all the people who were involved but i mean for us who grew up with it it was you know it's it was cool to see for us like behind the scenes and even just footage too and there was a lot of footage of uh the other x-men movies the newer ones which i was surprised i mean i really like we, even had, we, class, had a, but... we even had a snippet of the last fantastic four yeah we had michael p jordan for a second it's like if we're gonna use anything it's this um, but yeah, it was really that was really cute and cool. We got a nice little love letter to all those things, and I, I just think it's cool that like I, you could tell Ryan Reynolds really cared a lot of thought or whoever he was working with about about that in the end, you know, and what it means to them. And even again, going back to Chang Tatum, he didn't even have his shot, and he got his last shot, his chance in a movie that's like pretty much like capping off all that you know 21st century or 20th century fox uh mm-hmm. films and shit so that was that was really cool and just you know there's a lot of nostalgia of the x-men movies paired devil even for a second i saw punisher blade you know it's God, blade i know it, it was it was really cute and it was good yeah and of course the ending you know they made this thing where uh <laughs> It makes it look like Deadpool threw the Human Torch under the bus, right? Oh yeah. Like, so he, he, like we didn't see him say all these. Like Deadpool says all these gruesome things to fucking Cassandra Nova, and we don't know that <laughs> if the Human Torch said it. And the way it's shot is like, oh, he didn't say that. Deadpool's throwing him under the bus as he would, and you know she like rips his skin off and his body falls apart. And then <laughs> it's literally like Deadpool's like, no. You know, he actually said those things. He goes in his little TVA thing with the button, and it goes to, like, a camera switching. And Chris Evans, you know, who we have seen as, you know, the goodiest good as Captain America, thinks some crass-ass shit he would say to Cassandra <laughs> Nova, which was pretty great. Also, also shout out to Chris Evans for just making Human Torch sound way more stereotypical New Yorker than he ever did in the movies. <laughs> he just went full ham on the New Yorker. 
Um, but did you notice that when they actually showed the camera on the post credit scene, it was the same kind of camera that was um, the like the Kev- the Kevin Feige camera in She Hulk. Oh no! I I just thought about it until you said it. Damn, that's that's a nice touch. It's a lot. It's a lot of things they're grabbing at since they could grab them now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I I'm still shocked that Disney, even though it's a rated R movie, allowed them to go as far as they did. Like, I don't know why we had this family in the theater we were watching. They left like with 30 minutes left of the movie. And I don't know why, you know, it could have been it could be for any other reason. But it was like, you know, it was very odd. There's two two kids that shouldn't have been seeing this movie, you know, age wise. But I was just like, bro, there's a two hour movie. <laughs> you're, you're waiting till like an hour and a half to fucking leave, dude. It's like you might as well just watch the rest of the of the damn movie. You already seen most of the heinous shit that's been going on. Um, yeah. Happened with yeah. the first viewing of Deadpool. We literally next to this family, and they had like two like seven year olds. I was like, oh god, they don't oh, know. No. They don't know. <laughs> and first th- first five minutes, I was like, oh my god, these kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna have to <laughs> explain a lot of stuff to them later. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many really like f- good jokes. I I actually laughed a lot in this movie. It's just like stupid, you know, whatever humor. But it's like the, it's like comfort food, you know. Deadpool is comfort really food, really and a, and a nice and a nice refresher for the MCU, which is still weird that this is the only movie we're getting this year. The only other project that we're getting is um, the Agatha All Along. On Disney Plus, yeah. like in like in like November, but yeah, I'm okay with that. Let them take their time. Let them cook. Let them make something good. I think we've had enough of three or four Marvel movies here. It was great at its peak. I loved it. I was like, I need more, but I don't want the animators being overworked or whatever. That's not fair no. to them or the special effects people. That's not cool, you know. And I know Disney's a machine, but obviously they have the fucking money to make it good with time, considering they just rehired this motherfucker. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm very opinionated about it. I, I'm starting to feel it with that, what just happened. But anyway, digress. Um, Wolverine and Deadpool was, like you said, it's junk food. It's a lot of fun, and it, it hits you hard still. Uh, the nostalgia, if you don't have the nostalgia, it might maybe not as much. But for me, I was like, wow, this is. You know, I know you you guys are kind of saying or posting like, you know, Marvel's back, baby, with this movie. And I was like, feel it. <laughs> I feel it with this movie. So I think, I think this is the win that Marvel needed. Definitely is. You know, especially after movies recently that haven't hit, you know, for any other reason. But this is I'd like say hit financially. Like, yeah, but yeah, right yeah. Yeah. But I mean, as far as like critics and audience goes, like this is the hit that they haven't had in a, a little bit as far as Marvel goes. Um, it, and it's really good. And I think it's good that this is all we have to kind of sit on for this year because throughout the rest of this year, we can go like, man, wasn't that a fun movie? Like, man. Mar- Marvel gave us something real good this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm hoping that this is the this is the point where Marvel shows, okay, we need to readjust. We need to take a step back, look at everything that we need to do or that we want to do. And we're going to take this opportunity now that you know, we're saying goodbye to the Fox universe at the, but at the same time, we're bringing in all those characters to this universe. They are here now, like the characters Secret that Wars, you, baby. <laughs> Secret, Secret Wars. Wars, Secret Wars, but next year, you know, just to give a little sneak peek for next year, we got Captain America, Brave New, New World. World, we got. Uh, Thunderbolts. 
And we've exciting. got... What was the third? We have a show. Fantastic Four. Oh, that's going to be fucking year. wild. So that's, you know... I feel like out of the three, you know, Fantastic Four is probably the biggest, like, you know... That's the neat hit because they need to kind of break that Fantastic Four funk that they've had since the first movie of it not hitting or it, they didn't find the right formula to make like a Fantastic Four movie. So hopefully, you know, we can see the Fantastic Four in a new interesting way. It's going to be set in the 60s and then they're going to somehow bring him in to, you know, the the sacred timeline or whatever they call it. Um, I'm damn sure they're another dimension and they're going to hop in ours. I'm damn sure. Well, I we'll think see. so too. I think I think that's they're their, I think they're going to be um and, wow. you know, Thunderbolts is kind of like up in the air question cuz like we don't really know much about it. We know that they are starting production or they've been they've been in production for Thunderbolts um I don't remember which one um and Brave New World's pretty much done they're ready I will say that I know this is supposed to be a Deadpool Wolverine thing but I'll just I'll just say this it was so interesting and weird to see Harrison Ford super energetic at Comic-Con to being Red Hulk Oh yeah, and they're fucking walking out on stage. Of I know. <laughs> um, in a but yeah, I would love to see. The, I have a comic iteration of Deadpool on the Thunderbolts, so oh, not impossible. I'm just saying, you know, making that yeah. connection right there. So I know we're kind of getting more next year, but I'm hoping that with Deadpool and Wolverine, this is the this is. You know what? Actually, this is actually a good analogy, not analogy, but a good comparison. I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine is the kind of where Winter Soldier was in Phase 2. I'm not saying that they're the same movie, but I'm saying for what Winter Soldier did for Phase 2, I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine is going to do for Phase 5, and that now we're going to be starting to see a whole bunch of shit because, you know, looking back, we didn't we had a few good movies in the first few phases. We talked about this before, and it wasn't until Avengers where it's like the hype was starting to get there. But it, I feel like once we hit Winter Soldier, that's when yeah. that's when the hype really began for the in, the Infinity Saga or we didn't even know it was the Infinity Saga yet. We just knew. Kind Something of. was happening. There was a little hint at the end of Avengers, so yeah, little, little but it's like we, yeah, we could, I was like, we couldn't blown comprehend. Away, yeah, Winter Soldier yeah. was like, oh my god, this is, this is amazing. I still think it's amazing. It's really good. But yeah, but as far as far as Deadpool and Wolverine goes, I think they did a great job. You know, you the passion was there. You know. I personally, I personally give it a nine out of ten, out of in, just pure enjoyment. Like I, I love the Deadpool movies. Um, what would you give it, Joel? Uh, I, it's probably give or take the same. Honestly, the nostalgia is just—it was a lot, you know. It was really well done, and I, I'm very forgiving, um, you know, in terms of rating movies and stuff. But yeah, that. I still had high expectations and only a few things I really wanted them, them to meet and they, they met it. So it, yeah. I mean, it's just a fun, good time and movies should be fun. Not that guardians of the galaxy three wasn't fun or other ones, you know, oh, yeah, it, it no, should still be good a, ones. a fun viewing experience, you know, and, and it definitely was. Yeah. Like we, we grew up on the Fox Marvel movies and they were just stupid fun. Mm -hmm. Some of them were just fun in a bad way but you know this being the culmination of all of that and like a good like send off to that franchise you know applaud applause to them 
Um, but before I wrap it up, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you one more silly question, Joel. So Logan Wolverine was the anchor being in Deadpool's universe. Who do you think is the anchor being in the 616 timeline? Uh, I think we know who it is, but he's coming back and going to cause an incursion. I think we know. I mean, that what that world is doomed to fifteen thousand years or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so you're saying you're saying Tony Stark? I think so. They, I wouldn't put it past them that they would say that. But honestly, I'm, I'll, I'll, I think Tony Stark's the obvious answer. I'll say Captain America. Captain America. Okay. Play like Steve Rogers, Captain America. I have I have a somewhat silly answer. Something I've been thinking about for a good portion of the day, actually, because I I thought of this question early on today that I wanted to ask for this for this podcast. Yeah. Um, I think the anchor being for the six one six MCU timeline is the Stan Lee characters. That's fair, because you know. Up until he passed away, he was in every single movie. Didn't matter what it was, what he was doing. He was consistent and he was there. And now he's not. Now he's kind of, you know, gone. So you could say that things are starting to kind of unravel a little bit, you know, in the the, the Secret Wars era. So... Stan Lee, baby. All right. Well, that about Shit, does man. it. He was even in Big Hero oh. 6. <laughs> That's Hero true. Six Secret Wars, please. <laughs> true. Oh, my God. If if a fucking like TVA or like a sling ring portal opens and all of a sudden fucking Baymax just Baymax and the hero just fucking fly out of the fucking portal. Holy shit. It'll be dumb as fuck, but I'll <laughs> I'll clap in the theater. I'll, I'll go, yeah. Secret Wars in itself is dumb, in a way, <laughs> right? You're bringing all these heroes to, and villains to fight each other for some for the Beyonder or some bullshit. Like it is a Marvel property. Just saying. All right. Well, wait, th- Brian. You. Oh wait, what? Forgot to mention. Oh. Marvel properties, we are getting Venom 3 and Craven. Okay, moving on. Anyway, go ahead, Brian. Wrap us up. <laughs> oh, that's right. There was a Venom trailer. <laughs> the okay. We're moving Oops. on. Oops. Oops. Oh, well. He's going to la- last dance his way to the fucking <laughs> digital realm and super fucking quick. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> okay. Right, bring us home, Brian. All right. This will do it for our review on Deadpool and Wolverine. I hope you guys enjoyed our review. Let us know what you thought about Deadpool and Wolverine down below in the comment section. Mm. Um, If you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe if you want to. It would help us out. YouTube algorithm is a real big beast and we want to make sure that a whole bunch of nerds come hang out, discuss Anything and everything all nerdy. Uh, If you want to, like I said before, we just reviewed Star Wars Acolytes. You can go check that out uh, in the UWM Reviews playlist, as well as many other reviews that we've done in the past. And, you know, what will we review next? Who knows? Actually, we got two dates. Um... We're going to have, we haven't had in a while, we're going to have a roundtable discussion uh, about Star Wars. We've been uh, tiptoeing That's right. around this for, I'd say, years now. Um, uh, we've got some people down. Hopefully we can get everyone in, but I know people are busy. So, Star Wars and then Assassin's Creed with mm-hmm. some new blood. We're bringing some people we have got in here before and then some people who haven't. So, it's, for me, that's exciting. So uh, Oh, yeah. I like, uh, yeah, I'm playing through Assassin's Creed Mirage right now. Like we said, we just finished the Acolyte. Um, and I do think now that we've seen Deadpool and Wolverine, I just want to officially say I think we're due for a Marvel one now. So we have time. Uh, we got time. So, we got time, baby. Uh yeah. But yeah, just keep an eye out for that soon or 
if this is, you know, months from now or a year from now or whatever, it's already Go check it out. Yeah. Star Wars, Assassin's Creed, and more. All right. That'll about do it. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you all. We hope you have a good day, night, or whatever it is. But remember to forever and always keep on nerding. Feels like home. Ba-da-da-da-da-da. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>